because I've been dragging my feet on it because it's been uh, it's been uh, a long time here. So so I I because I knew I had to take apart my M2 to do it. So can I share my screen? Oh, I don't need to share the screen. I just need to point it at the right thing. All right, so there we go. So that's where the uh, M2 was. And uh, I just put up French cleats. I've got a 10 foot ceiling in here, so it's a lot of room. And I only did it up at, to a certain point. But uh, yeah, so right now my my Maslow's or my M2's over there, all sad and lonely. So I got to put it up on the other wall again, but I need to make a different mount so I can mount the, the stuff over there. Can you guys see all that? Yeah, I see it. Okay. So uh, you have an idea how you're going to mount it? Yeah, I've been kicking around a couple ideas. Um, I can make a mount for for the top beam and, and put it on here. But obviously we know that the top beam to the uh, waist to the waste board is is a key measurement. So what I'm thinking about doing is tying the top beam into um, into a piece and I've I've CNC cut some some pieces, but I'm not sure that's going to work right now. I, I think it would work. I just I think I've changed my mind on how I'm going to mount it. I was kind of thinking of putting this uh, this sheetrock mounted on the on the French cleats okay. on a hinge, and then I don't know how I'm going to do this, but 3D print some uh, some wings that'll come out underneath the sheetrock, or not the sheetrock, but the uh, waste board, and swing it out and make it at 15 degrees exactly, and then again have it mounted, you know, because this. Each one of these are level, and I put these up with the level, you know, that I put them up, but my floor isn't level. So I don't want to rest it on the floor anymore because then, you know, it will it will be at an angle compared to my, you know, the, the French cleats. But if I have it hanging on the French cleat, I think I could assume that this is level with this one and then, you know, have the mount, the top mount um, attached somehow. So... I was thinking about making some two by four mounts and playing with it, but uh, I haven't got to that point yet. So, do you have a three D printer? I do not. No. You need to get one. <laughs> where would where would I get one? Uh, is there is there a company that sells three D printers? Uh, <laughs> I'm not aware of. <laughs> we got we got we got we got a little one. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. I heard that. Yeah. So. This is just one sheet of plywood and it went all the way up on my 10 foot ceiling and, and uh, I really like the French cleat thing. I've got a bunch of mounts on the other wall. I'll be able to move some of them over here, but obviously the, uh, the M2 is going to take up, you know, a lot of the space, a lot of space, but I'd be able to move it and then possibly put it on the other wall if I uh, rearrange, you know, the, the shop or whatever. So. Yeah, so gonna be a range. You're gonna want to put more. You want to want to put more cleats on the other side. I, I've got cleats on all all the walls now, so <laughs> there's no other ways. So I got a I got a question. I'm yep. so I don't have one of these, but I'm kind okay. of tuning in to kind of see what's going on. And so you mentioned that you know there's there's critical dimensions. I get that. Um, but and you mentioned your floor being at a level, so you want to basically suspend it. Um, is there like how is is the cat like would the calibration process be able to take out that sensitivity like i again i don't have one of these i'm just kind of tuning in to see what's going on and sure i'm just curious uh you know in my setup when i finally decide to get one of these um yeah. is that something that the calibration process would not be able to absorb if you were like out of that's slightly out of square or out of level. No, I mean, I think it could. Other people can feel free to chime in, but 
I think, uh, I think you definitely could. Um, you know, my floor is not too sloped, but it has a slope towards the front of the garage. Um, yeah, mine, mine too. It's right. It's I, I put some cabinets, I built some cabinets and, um, made a little miter station on one of the walls and I was shot. Like I didn't take any measurements ahead of time, but I made just use some carriage bolts as, uh, leveler feet. And I was shocked at how much that pitch was. So I was just, I was just curious you know what uh, most people a lot of people have garages for their shops a lot of men do a yeah no i get that and that's and that's what and i so got a, when, when you're doing the i know when when uh i knew some people that used to do floors they always had a little slope for the water just in case the water oh, yeah. ever came in you know but as far as that um the ca calibration and all that as long as your measurements are correct you know because the the machine only knows what you put in there. Yeah, you right. Know, it only knows the measurements that you put in there. So it knows the calibration of what you put it in there, you know. And if it's not leveled and you're putting your measurements, it's going to be off. You're going to be off a little, you know. So the calibration would not be able to correct for, say, like, say it's an aggressive slope, like five degrees on, a, on the floor. The calibration would not be able to handle that. Well, as long as well, as long as you put in the measurements correctly. So if it's if it's unleveled, I mean, there's no way, you, there's no reason for you to leave it on, on off level. Does that make sense? So you yeah just no it, yeah I, no it perfectly makes sense. And obviously, I would adjust the adjust the frame uh, to account for that, like putting leveling feet and you know some sort of shim or whatever. But I was just curious how sensitive it was. So it sounds like it, you know, obviously do do all the due diligence to make it as square and level as I can. Um, I was just curious, uh, you know, how, how much that calibration would buy me, you know, how, how tight does that tolerance need to be for the calibration still to, to account for that? Not, not too much. Uh, what are you going to, what, what are your plans to, if you do plan to get an M2, what are you planning to, to use it with? Uh, so um, most of the, I don't really know. So I'm kind of a hobbyist. I have a, I have a, uh, an X carve that I use for smaller stuff. And this thing looks awesome. You know, I'm, I don't have a, you know, to be able to cut from a full sheet is like, Oh man, that's, that's incredible. Um, especially at the price point, like it's just like, it's, it seems like a no brainer, you know, I'm just kind of like salivating over, over one of these systems, but yeah, most of the stuff it would be either cutting um, cutting plywood uh, or or I would you know screw like a laminated. You okay. know, so you're not you're not you're not you're not trying to do like three D reliefs or anything like that, right? Like no, not at the moment. I'm thinking, yeah, this would be like two and a half D kind of stuff. But. Yeah, because yeah, because it's more yeah, it's more of a two D kind of thing. You can do a little bit of reliefs, but you have to understand that we don't have a gantry. You know, it rides on a sled, so you yeah, won't right. No, I that. I get that, and I've I've done a little bit of that, you know, full three D with the coat, and I I understand that you know you can import the g-code or the gerbil uh, you know all those parameters in there and i've seen some videos where people have really done some pretty cool 3d kind of carbs using uh you know ball nose ball nose bit but yeah most of the stuff i'm going to be that i'm planning on doing is simply going to be you know 2d 2d kind of stuff so it really it, the level was probably not that significant i might be off alignment with grain if i'm trying to do grain as being fully parallel or something but um yeah. so you love you like your f you like your x car huh i i really do uh but i'm just finding that man if it was just and it was probably about three weeks after i bought it they came out with the x car pro uh that was a full four feet wide i'm like oh man i just bought a little too early but even the price point for their x car pro um it's about was more than what was more than i wanted to buy so what is it at right now like 12 uh i can't remember i don't think it's that high um if you buy the full four foot width i'd have to look at the price again but they're uh 
I think the initial, like their first offering, like, you know, it was super discounted. They're trying to get early adopters involved and uh-huh. that kind of stuff. But I think the price point for the initial offer was only $6,000, 6, um, which that was, that was awesome. But now I need so much floor space for it. And, uh, you know, I just, I don't have that kind of space that I can give to the, sh- to my shop. Yeah, and, 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 and I, this don't, I don't want to have fast. Stuff, like build awesome. a build a giant table and then roll it out of the garage every time I want to, you know, do some big assembly or anything. And and I'm also and if I had to roll it out, I'd be beholden to whatever the weather was looking like too. So, um, and like it, this one you have to um, if you want to cut a full sh- four by eight sheet, you're gonna have to upgrade to the 15 foot chains. Mm-hmm. And uh, instead of doing a 10 foot beam, you want to use a 12 foot beam. You gotcha. Know, you can still use it. It's four by eight. You can put a four by eight sheet, but you're not going to get accuracy to all the corners, if that makes sense. No, that makes uh, perfect sense. And I know, I, yeah, obviously the sled has a finite width too. So the bit from the edge of the sled to the bit center, I know, uh, and I can play some games by, in, you know, building the the waste board bigger and like having sacrificial material or like you know just mill down some two by four to the right thickness and and build like a uh, a sled sled guide outside that but um yeah most of the stuff it's certainly going to be you know probably only three by seven is what i would imagine i would really use as part of that full sheet of plywood Oh yeah, then you you'll be good. Then you should be good. Okay, all right. Um, and how did you hear about a Maker Made? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, so um, I was just like, my wife will tell you, like, anytime I got two young kids, and you know, I'll have like fifteen minutes when my wife's putting the kids down to bed, and it's like, well, I'm not gonna watch a show. Like we watch TV together, and I'm not gonna watch a show ahead of her, and you know, but. I got 15 minutes. It's like I'll go on YouTube and kind of check <laughs> You're out. You're a good man. What... You're a yeah. good man because yeah, I go, I go, I go on there and I'll check out and see what people have done. And anyway, I was just looking up CNC. You know, like people trying to commercialize their hobby. And anyway, this um, this it, it's an old video now, but it was new to me. But it was a, I think it was, it was Adam Savage's group, but they did an interview and a and a little demo video um, of the, and like the prototype system, the Maslow back, I think it's like five or six years old, but I was like, oh man, this looks super cool. And that is so innovative. Like, uh, you know, I know it's not gonna give me thousandth of an inch kind of tolerance, but you know, it's everything's within sander range uh, as long as you're, you know, within, you know, 50 thousandths or something. And it seemed like this machine could do that. No problem. Even if it was, even if you didn't have like the perfect calibration and, and, and parameters set, but I was like, man, this is just a cool at that, you know, that the original Maslow, I think that's like what a $500, $500 system. I, I, it's I like, think man, 595, I think or 585 or something like yeah, that. Yeah. It's right like, now. man, you spend $600. Like I, that's, that's, t- uh, you know, that's 10 sheets of really nice plywood. And I wouldn't bat an eye on buying 10 sheets of plywood. So why wouldn't I spend that money on something like this that would enable to exactly. you know, enable me to really kind of turn up the quality and the sot the scale that I can and I can see work and if with. you're gonna do that, if you're gonna do that, men might as well spend an extra five hundred dollars more exactly and get the M2 because the M2 right. is forty percent faster. You know, um, uh, Drew actually he's on there. Check it out. Hi, Drew, how's it going? Good. How are y'all doing? Sorry, I'm working. Yeah, he, he has a couple of our, uh, our our machines out there. Yeah, I got a bunch of. So, I think I set up this one's <laughs> rework, but yeah. Well, this one's got the laser on and everything. Are oh, you looking yeah, at the laser? the laser? You looking to buy one? Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm thinking about. Um, you know, I'm just, just kind of a hobbyist. I'm not. Like I'm, I'm toying with the idea of kind of commercializing some of my work. Like my wife does some, um, she does some crafty stuff. And a lot of the X card work that I've done recently is like building little, um, 
kind of circular picture frames that are oh, yeah. specific to like she does a lot of embroidery that's like and that like that that kind of craft <laughs> is like blowing up right now and yeah. they don't sell like frames where you can just literally drop that embroidery hoop in it and pin it and then you can just hang it on the wall so you know for six bucks of material she can add like thirty dollars on to the sale price of that item and it's like well yeah i can I can buy, you know, I'm just buying just milled pine from Home Depot. Oh, I see that. Yeah, that's what I have. My ex-wife decided she wanted to do a brewing <laughs> machine. And I spent, I think, five or six thousand dollars. I should have bought a commercial one, but I bought that one because it was the Husqvarna touchscreen deluxe. Or whatever, anyways, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, yeah, it would be good to, because the net, they charge so much for the nuts and everything else. It's smart. If, but yeah, the, I would say thing I have here is pretty much. It started, for, I did tech startups for years and I did, uh, and a lot of the stuff was also my hobby. And so, honestly, the, how I ended up with my first uh, Maslow or my main maker raid, the M1, was I, I, my wife was like, What do you want for Father's Day? And I was like, You know what? I really want a Maslow bad. And so she bought me the kit for Father's Day. And now we have three of them. I have, yeah, big I know, I'm, too. I'm, I'm kicking myself too because I was looking at it around Mother's Day and they had a, it was $200 off the current price and i was like man i should have just bought it right then and there i don't know what i why i was dragging my feet but i think we have a nose cell going on too my it might get mike will get something like you yeah there. you could just get with me and i can we, we can we can arrange something and we can do some kind of live demo and i can give you a little discount oh that'd be awesome that sounds great well i'm glad i tuned <laughs> in just for that <laughs> honestly the one thing that's great about these two is so i have like the I have like the Langmuir system. This is a, the plasma CNC. This is the like basically the maker made of plasma CNCs. It's oh, like you gotta, you gotta you gotta stop showing me stuff because I don't have this kind of money, but I want to buy everything that's in your <laughs> right now. But the thing is, with the Langmuir systems, it's kind of it's neat. They have some good YouTube videos, but they don't have a community. And like one thing I love about here is with maker made, they have an amazing community. So like it's not just you're getting a good machine, you're getting a great community. And there's a lot of people that are on these. Uh, like I'm not an employee. I'm not like I'm just gonna. I'm just. I'm just a guy. I just like the products and so. Yeah. And it's kind of fun. I like the community. I really love being on this call. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's a bunch of good people on every week doing exactly. different projects. I just started. I just started working for MakerMate a couple months ago, and I've had my MakerMate since October of last year. You know, so I loved it. You know, and it's it, it's an amazing product. It really is. You know, it really is. Yeah, so I mean, it's worth if you're looking at other machines. I, I have like I have the, I have a bunch of the little ones like the um, shapos and other things like that too. And yeah. uh, what do you call it? Yeah, that's actually my wife was was so I had a, a lot of stuff in our our I had storage units and then I had our garage filled to the point where you couldn't fit in our garage anymore. She's like, you're getting a building. This is insane. So I, the goal has been to turn it into a hobby that pays for itself in some way. So. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm I'm looking for too. I you know I don't I'm I'm not going to quit my day job, but yeah. it would be nice it would be nice to have something that I can you know I I can make enough money that I can take the family on a big you know a nice like week or two vacation every year. Like that's what I'm kind of looking for. Yep. I'll be honest. I made these little mini dumpster fires. So my when school started in 2020 for my kids, I have five kids and. It was like a disaster. Like the remote schooling was a mess. So I, bought, I made the teachers to the little, like these little mini dumpster fires candles. Yeah. As a joke. And so, um, and then I, I was like, uh, my friend's like, you should put them on Etsy. So I threw them up on Etsy. And my, my daughter has an Etsy store. And so uh, they, and then uh, she was talking to, uh, she was like, you know, let me help you with your marketing on your Etsy store. We did, went from doing like $300 a month of sales on those things, which was just kind of, hey, it was kind of neat, um, yeah. to doing $17,000 in eight days. <laughs> yeah so i was like that, in fact i, yeah, I had to like, call I, my friends i'm like i don't care get everybody you can we were like we were like just find everybody you can to come down here and work they can use a nail gun they can use a saw and get their bus down here yeah and I've, <laughs> heard, you know, never know. I've heard stories i've heard stories too of like people like eh, this is kind of cool making some cutting boards and then it's like it literally oh. overnight like some some link is shared and suddenly yep. it becomes like oh man i can you know, it, you don't ever want to burn bridges, but it's like, man, I could, no, it I didn't could last. probably just I make a living last. doing so this. It was one of those things where it lasted for a couple of weeks um, through, um, you know, Black Friday and Christmas. And then uh, I, it actually lasted a little longer than I thought it would. I figured 
but yeah, I mean, but you never know. So you may have those things that you get one that works and you'll find your next one and you'll find your next one. And, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's definitely a fun machine and it's a good community. That's one thing. It's, it's, one, it's one of the things you won't regret. And you can do the laser. You can put a laser on it and stuff, which is nice. Yeah, so what is, the, what, is, what is the laser, what, is that, what does that enable for you? Um, you can engrave. Yeah, you can do some engraving. Like, it's like, oh, uh, I, I see. You're actually using that as a, uh, just as a, yeah. not a cutter, but like an engraver, I got you. He'll, he'll cut thin stuff. Like, I mean, I have big 150 watt lasers upstairs up there. God, you uh, got to stop. You got to stop but, telling uh, me about all your but, toys. Uh, but, yeah. Well, some days it's a nightmare. Uh, but you know, this, so this one, you could do some cool stuff, though, with the one you're putting on there. Let's see here if I have one thing to do. Like, I was having fun sitting around. I did this. So I don't know if you can see that. So, okay, yeah. So just yeah, you know, I just was having fun doing with the vector and so you just basically you do you take the you take the router out and just mount a laser. It's a sled. Oh, we're I gonna see. have a sled. So we're gonna have a sled. It's gonna have a dedicated sled to your um oh y'all do the dedicated sled? Thank God. Yes, sir. Like yeah, we're gonna, smart. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna do a dedicated sled that way you don't have to take off the router. All you literally have to do is just take off the chains. And take off the chain right there and put the other sled on and that's it. Pop the clips and that's it. That's great. Yeah, I know I, I, I know I've looked at people using the um, using the software and I know there was like a, a button for a laser and I'm like, oh, they're probably planning some stuff. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it actually came out on the 15th of May, the, the, the uh, pre-sale, so pre-order. So you can order it and then it starts shipping out, I believe, in the beginning of July, if I'm not mistaken. What it, so what, what's the... This is just the sled, right? We have to we provide our own laser. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. This is the sled and the laser and the laser. What's the what's the power of that laser on that? Uh, you have a choice between a two point eight or a seven watt. Seven watt. Okay, so still yeah, seven, seven like, watt, maybe maybe you could cut eighth inch if you make a couple passes. Exactly, yeah. and if you modify a few things and you put some air assist on yourself, yes, you can. You know, but okay. yeah. But that's all on you. You know what I mean? It's mostly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I get that. Yeah. I get that. It's actually super easy. It's not too bad. Like I, I've, I was, I've been helping him prototype and play with it. So um, it's been really cool. It, it, but uh, and it's nice because I, I have like, like I said, the big ones have pastor stuff. But it's if you want a big laser, I mean, it's a, like I have, this thing has chillers and like you're talking about. It's they're a lot. They're a pain for some of the. Yeah, the no, I, I get that. And yeah, pain, my so my uh, my wife is always looking at stuff and uh she's like man i can't wait till i get a uh a, she's the product's called a glow forge yeah and... i've actually got glow forge is another room i like them they're neat <laughs> they're, um, they're, they're cool for using they're definitely cool for projects they're i i they're awesome if you, but honestly yeah. if you're really looking she wants to have some fun um look at some of the um for the price you're on paper glow forge you can get some really good light. There's better stuff because light burn. You can do the same camera function, all that. Mm -hmm. And there's some really cool ones for. Uh, that's the control. Get, that's a that's the control software, right? For yeah, so like, like right. Yeah, it's a like uh, we have a uh, the Glowforge Pro, whatever, and it's like sitting up there like uh, right now because honestly, it's cool for certain things, but it's uh, the other ones. You get nice lasers like the Glowforge. Uh, I think it's like four thousand for the plus. Yeah, and the pro is like five or whatever, and then the base model is three. You no, get no, 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 no. It's actually uh, Patrick. We went to Patrick's, and he had he actually had a the the one in the middle, and he paid sixty five. Yeah, sixty five hundred for his. Yeah. So, and I have I I usually so there's things one things that maybe really like make made. So I have one of the three D printers and some of the other stuff too. And uh, is so my. Um, my Glowforge died on me. And so I, I, I rebuilt a lot of lasers and I built my own lasers. And I had um, an issue where uh, I went to, I, uh, I called Glowforge. I was like, hey, and it was right out of warranty. And, uh, and there's another company that I had a printer from and they were, I was out of warranty and they, no problems with me anymore and stuff like that. I called Glowforge and it's proprietary parts. I mean, it's not yeah. like with these big lasers where I can just go buy a Rubia controller off of Amazon and replace it. And they're like, nope. It's I was like, I don't want you. Like, you just buy a new one. I'm like, well, I don't want to spend four thousand dollars or five thousand dollars on a new one at the time. And I was like, huh. 
And so they wouldn't, they wouldn't work with me. They were just like, nope. And I was like, can I just buy that? Can I just get it repaired or whatever? And they're like, $3,000 to repair. I'm like, well, it's $4,000 for a new machine. And luckily we had a bunch of media because we were doing uh, the, uh, what do you call it? Um, we made ventilators, emergency ventilators. Uh, we, don't, we volunteered and um, we're manufacturing emergency ventilators. And we were using laser cutters and they saw our laser cutters. And so they're like, okay. But they still charged me $1,000 for replacement for it. I was like, really guys? The Rudia controller is like, so you can get, uh, you can actually get a nice laser like this one with a nice chiller. This whole setup you can get for like three grand, 2,500 bucks. And this is 120 watt, much bigger bed. Wow. Yeah. And you could do the same camera function. And um, so like they, they do with light burn and light burn's awesome. So uh, that's what I'd recommend, honestly. There's things that are cool about the glow for it. It's really neat, but honestly, for what you can get for, once you get used to it, you'll, you'll want a big laser. Yeah. I use it for training interns. I use the Glowfork for training interns now. Yeah, that's another thing too. I, I don't ever want to buy stuff. Like if if I can spend just a little bit more money to get a lot more capability, like I'm always interested in that. Um, yeah. Because it's like, I know I'm, ar I'm already going to invest a lot of money in something, but if it's just 10% more, but it buys me double capability, well, yeah, I'm going to buy that. Well, and you can also expand it. Like, that's a nice thing. Like, all these, those big, that big red one up there has passed. That's actually off of Amazon. The big one, red one was off of Amazon, 2500 bucks. Yeah, and I've seen some of those, like, China-built systems, and people swear by them. And the, the fact that it's, like, I, like, it's not open source, but it's... It's standardized it's, hardware. So, it's they're all like using... It's, the yeah. You can manage it. You know, you can buy components that are comparable and strap it on, and it works. Like that's, well, uh, that's, that, that's what so that where all this ties into is the Maslow is really cool because like the laser you can have the laser module you can do your own stuff it's using an Arduino and so like this laser this is a fifteen thousand dollar laser here so I got this one because I, I had a friend that actually caught it on fire the whole thing went up on flames so I I and I at the time I couldn't get parts so I literally I bought the chain link off of Amazon I bought some new belts I boiled all the uh, metal. And redid it, and then on the end side, I just bought new Rudy controllers off of Amazon, and I rebuilt the whole thing. Well, what, why did like, it? What did it cause fire? What was huh? what was the root? What was the root cause for it to cause a fire? The air assist went off. <laughs> it happened. We catch it on fire right now. If your air assist, so the air assist is down there, just like a fish tank blower. The air assist oh. goes off, and you're running a like this one's a um, 150 watt laser. It's got a big six foot laser tube. Uh, it's you, they they. They go up in flames fast, <laughs> and they weren't. They'd walked away from it, and you can still see all the smoke. I didn't clean all everything out because I was just too lazy to do all that. But I could buy regular steppers. I could repair it easily. Uh, the and you can run it for long periods of time because you can just use a standard chiller. Um, but like these are electron microscope chillers. I'm just using because I got those at a good deal. But uh, but you can use the regular CWs. But the nice thing is later on, like I added this camera, and you can tell my amazing duct tape and hot glue job. Looks great. So, yeah. So you, and that's just a, uh, and a, a, you can, there's all these things you can do to it. That, uh, like, if, yeah, you can sell, we've actually caught this thing on fire. <laughs> I keep burning stuff. But the thing is, if you, with the Maker Maids, the nice thing is, it's all like, even a 3D printer is based on uh, basic components. They've, they've taken it, they packaged it together really well and made it super easy to use and built those communities around it. And so you really, it's, that's one thing. That, I like so if you're looking at that's one thing where it's yes people the cheap chinese knockoff lasers or there's things with them but at the end of the day the rudia controllers are great uh the all the steppers and the stepper drivers and all those things like that are pretty standardized so you're not like if something happens like even my new lenses i have on this one you can just buy the lenses yeah off of amazon so uh you need there uh that's, that's what i would look at but um the glow for the, or what do you call it? The, uh, the Mazda. I think if, if the cool thing is, so what you nice too is if you, with the M2, they're using light burn for the laser function. So if you get an M2, um, and then you start playing, want to play and get the laser, start playing with laser, all the software, everything you're doing translates to a, a big laser. If you get one of the Chinese lasers, you don't change software for anything, which makes it really nice. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of uh, and a lot of uh, um, people owners that actually um, own uh, 
M2s and, and regular Mazdos can actually use the lasers, you know. All they gotta just do is buy the laser in the mount. Yeah. And you can also do like a spindle, like a water cooled spindle on them, which is cool. Instead of a, a router later on, you go on Amazon for 500 bucks and buy a water cooled spindle so it's quieter and you can have speed control since the M2 has a PWM control in the back, which is nice. So, AKC. my recommendation get 15 foot chains. The 15 foot chains are worth it. Gets you a little bit extra. Anybody, anybody got any other questions? Say that again. Anybody got any other questions? Hey everybody, sorry I'm late. I'm just trying to get the garage done. Just thought I'd check in, see how everything's going. Hey Kate, how's it going? It's getting there. <laughs> I gotta say this is uh yeah, it's pretty cool. I um is this is this a typical uh typical meetup every week like this? this number of participants or like how active is this uh how active is this forum in this fashion um every thursday we have them yeah sometimes it'll be like 10 15 people on here it's really okay. cool get like a, a mixture you get people all the way from brand new that ever bought like yourself that are looking to buy one to people that are kind of playing with it and learning or getting and trying to figure it out and to people that are like experts that are doing like doing all kinds of stuff with it and so it's, it's fun because it, it's such, it's an active community so you have yeah, a lot of cool. all that cool all right well that's uh not that i needed any more any more information to grow my enthusiasm to get one but that's certainly uh that certainly adds to it um all right. Well, yeah, I got to think about it a little bit more. Uh, we got mm -hmm. holiday weekend, but yeah, I'm probably going to pull the trigger here in the next couple weeks yeah, and, for this weekend. and get me one. Uh, okay. What holiday is this weekend? Memorial Day. Oh, is it Memorial Day? Crap. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, what what's a holiday anymore with all this COVID stuff, right? Like, it's just another day. <laughs> uh, okay. Reach out to me. You want to send me a message to Mike at makermade.com. Okay. Yeah. Did you make that, Drew? Oh, a um, injection mold. Hey, is a uh, Casey Connolly out here? A three-part injection mold. I did it with. I have a big SLA 3D printer, and so it's a it's a like it's a poly tough. Uh, it's a tough uh, high temp resin, and then have you actual. Did you make that one with the Maker Made, right? No, that one I actually had three. Uh, I I actually uh, it's a resin liquid resin printer. Oh, okay. Yeah, that it's that uh, injection molds have to be high pressure. I, um, and the, I can't get out of uh, FDM like that. Things like it feels like a it feels like aluminum. All right, Casey. Uh... I think Casey's but... on. Yeah, I'm here, Lauren. Hey, Casey, I was going to ask you, man, uh, in your videos, I've been watching your two tankers creation. Um, your, did you do a precision uh, calibration video? I haven't yet. I plan on doing it now that, I don't know, you guys seen my posts on there. I completely gutted my shop. I mean, yeah, I saw the pictures. Now. Yeah. Well, I finally got all the insulation back up, walls up, AC, everything installed, and I just got the, 
I just got the CNC put back on the wall here the day before yesterday. So I'm going to have to go through a complete recalibration here. So I'll probably do a precision whenever I do mine. Yeah, because I, uh, I tore my machine down with the upgrade kit, which I do love. Um, I was curious if they were ever going to upgrade the upgrade kit with the new system. Uh, I, but the bottom line was, uh, for some reason, in the calibration second time around, uh, I'm struggling to get it below two millimeters, um, which I know isn't a lot, but, you know, as you know, as a perfectionist, you, you want it as close as you can. Uh, but then I also noticed that when I rotated my actual uh, sled that I noticed the bit was moving just ever so slightly. So I think I may have an issue with my router not being dead center. Um, I didn't know, cause I know you said you had one of those, uh, those centering jigs. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know if you I had did. any more available to purchase. Um, what size of bit are you using? Uh, right now, I just use it my for when I'm doing my actual precision. I do an eighth inch bit. Okay. It's a quarter inch to cut down to an eighth inch. Yeah, I can probably start getting some printing this weekend. Uh, I can make you a set of them. I I have a set of one eighth and uh, a quarter that I I print them at the same time. So I can probably okay. get uh, get those running for you if you want here this weekend. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you get a chance, I don't have a 3d printer. It's a market I'm into in the future, but definitely not right now. Yeah. Um, Cause I, I have my, you know, I ain't going to lie. I was kind of disappointed. My, my upgraded sled came in the mail and uh, it's a little bit like, looked like it got beat up from the factory, but it still works fine. But I'd like, I really wanted, I just, I saw one online kind of like it. I wanted to build like a full plexiglass one. Uh I saw one of those. I thought it looked pretty cool. Would like to see it and try it. Um, or even yeah, is, that, laser uh, Drew, is that made out of the boat? Yeah. I did, I did it out of uh, half inch flexi. Yeah. So I, I've always wanted to build one of those. Um, I kind of had to rig some stuff on mine to do the, to do the weights. I need to send in a picture because I still did the plates on it, um, which I still like. It's just uh, for some reason, the, the real question I was going to wonder when you're doing, because I watched your video on the Z axis calibration beforehand, I was like, look, I'm going to go to the source before I do something stupid and make sure I'm doing it right. Um, and I noticed like at first when I was doing Z axis, I would go uh, that did just the same way you showed in the video, but I would go down uh, five millimeters at a time, do the measurement, put it in and then just go down again. Instead, when I realized what got it back to, we quickly got it right through like three or four uh, bracketing measurements was when I went back to zero each time before I went down another five meters or five millimeters. Uh, but that brings me to my next question. When you're doing the precision calibration, do y'all go to the each of the, what is it, six? Yeah, the six uh, cuts. Do you go back to center each time or do you just go uh, from the top dead center to the top left, top or middle left, or do y'all just how do y'all go about it? Y'all just all at one time? Yeah, normally I go to be honest with you, I've only done the precision two or three times. Normally, on my regular calibration, whenever I just run edge calibration and not precision, because I, I take so much time in setting my frame up, you've seen how I measured the distance, the offset. I mean, right. I did the exact same thing. I, I actually set mine up and measured it the same way as you showed. And it sure enough, I was, I thought I was, because actually that was part of my build is I had to lower everything because I realized my wasteboard was too high as it was. Um, so I lowered everything and actually ended up hitting it. I think it was like right on 470 or whatever it was. It was perfectly set up. I just am not sure it's still within like two millimeters of the calibration. So I'm trying to figure out if maybe I have a measurement off or if I'm doing the calibration, I should try doing it in a different way. Yeah. You might have a, a slight measurement off there, but if you, if, you know, I can't stress this enough. If you take the time on your frame setup and make sure everything's square, everything's right. I hit 1.5 right off the bat on my edge measurement. 
I mean, you don't, you know, a lot of people, they'll do their very first edge calibration and it says right. 20 some odd millimeters off and they have to sit there and redo it, redo it. That's because the sled, the software is trying to calibrate to the frame and everything being tweaked. So it's constantly trying to relearn that. Every time you do that, it, it calibrates and gets better and better and better. But if your frame is level, square, straight and everything right off the bat, I usually end up with a, an edge calibration or uh, just a regular edge calibration in between 1.5 and two, my very first time out. And then I have done the the precision calibration but to be honest with you i've found that my precision calibration doesn't actually help me get much better i mean it doesn't it's still within it still shows that it's within a millimeter so it's not right. what i found is if you look behind your board and this was just playing around i built a, a long wedge and what I did was I took and I stuck that wedge behind my board that's bolted up to the wall right in the center yeah. because it had a very slight bow in it going across the wall. So I stuck a wedge in okay. there, tapped it with a hammer and ran my edge calibration again. And I got one millimeter. Just a slight bow in your board will give you a millimeter or so off. Right. I mean, yeah, when I use my calipers, I one millimeter is so small yep but yeah just just chasing perfection because as i as i build more projects and i start building more things for customers i realize a lot of them don't but when i build it for myself i, I can't stand it so well, um, well one thing i did if you if you're dead right if you go through that frame so this one so this one that one I keep, that one's been pretty calibrated but this one i did i did i redid the precision i finally got everything where i went back and i the first thing i did is do the frame as went through the frame is a little off and so i laser cut this and i had to go back over it so i went uh, then the project I went back over it. if you look in there i don't know if i can get close enough to see let me flip my camera you can see so i went back and it's calibrated so well now that if you look at these lines you can see where i came back and let's see if i can get it to go in close enough but you can see where I, there's a double line in there it's like a and you're talking that's like le like a sharp pencil width that's like a and um, it's all calibrated. This, if you look in that little corner, you can kind of see where the calibration is a little bit yeah. off. Okay, I see it now. Yeah, it's hard to talk to, but I was able, and this is a big thing. And I was able to um, go back, rehome, I fired everything back up, and um, I told it to do the same thing. And it, it was, it's calibrated so well now that, like, there's, if you, there's little bitty spots where you can see, but the the laser went over the exact same spot without a problem. And without uh, even move, with the thing moving around, like there's there's a little bit of area where you can see just a little bit of double line. But, but again, we're talking that's like a tenth of a millimeter. I can also yeah. tell you that one millimeter. I know you know it's kind of annoying knowing that it's out of calibration one millimeter, right? But I build furniture grade, you know, flat pack stuff at one millimeter, and I rarely do any sanding on it. I mean, it's so darn close that you can't. You can physically. Oh, for sure. And so, no, I know. And it, my, my only problem was, is it was, it wanted to stay at like almost three millimeters. Uh, yeah. That's too far. Yeah. And that's, and I, when you build something at three millimeters, I get frustrated, you know, when you, you button boards up and you want it to be flush and yeah, I just, it's a frustrating thing. I just, you know, it's my machine. I love my machine, you know, no other machine is like my machine, that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, but we also, you know, some of the folks, I've had four or five different groups of people roll through here at the Hacienda over the past month or so. People wanting to talk about the M2, people wanting to see it in demo, wanting to help with their units, right? And uh, one of the things that I always stress is, you know, you only need a good enough quality for your customers, and a lot of the folks that build these things, they were doing like uh, what your wife is doing. She built, you, you cut out the circles and the signs and letters. Yep. Nobody sees a millimeter off on that, right? Because everything is designed to be different thicknesses and depth. That's what right, right. appealing to the eye. So when, you, when I look at that, um, you know, Erica and them came over, they were building four foot letters. And I thought, you know what? 
you're a millimeter off. Who cares? Your customers aren't going to go over there and measure that R while you're having a garden party, right? And say, hey, it's yeah. a millimeter. Nobody knows. Nobody cares. Nobody can see it. So, you know, you only go as far as you, in my mind, you only go as far as you absolutely need to. You drive yourself nuts trying to get that. The Maslow was never designed to be, to have accuracy at fractions of a millimeter right? It's not the X carve. It's not a unit like that. It's, it's not a gantry CNC. So it's, it's always going to have some, some play in it. So in my mind, if you get a millimeter calibration on there, man, you're excellent. You're good. You can do, you can cut just about anything you want at a millimeter. I'll tell you so, this. We did some parts for the air force. So for some, um, for the, the uh, some of the jets, we need, they needed a small run for a part they couldn't get anymore. And it, they, it, they're super for their ASA standards and everything else. We had, uh, and that was one millimeter tolerances. There's a few things that were a tenth of millimeter tolerances, but everything for, and that is for uh, aerospace. So it, it, they were in one millimeter tolerances. So, I mean, that's, it, it's one millimeter is still pretty damn good. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not too concerned about it. It's just, you know, I always, you know, tell the people that work for me, chase perfection and accept excellence. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, it's just what it comes down to. And uh, what I've also noticed is the, the cleaner the cut, the better the cut, the less the cleanup. Because, yeah, it only takes me 15, minutes, 20 minutes to make a cut. But, man, that 30-minute cleanup it's, gets old really fast. Um, but, yeah, I was, just, uh, I was, I was curious if there was a better way in the centering. I, I got to go. Do I'll what? talk to y'all later. Have a good one. Uh, hey, Drew. Uh, yeah, Lauren, you rarely hear anybody say my favorite part of my woodworking is sanding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, I made, a, I made a deal with my wife. She had to do most of the sanding if I was going to cut into her woodworking business. Yeah. I was like, oh, you got to do a lot of the cleanup. And it still comes back my way more than I want, but it is what it is. Yeah, but um, I enjoy the job, so. The standard things you're talking about, like making sure things are square, making sure your your router is centered in the three inch hole those to me those are key right if you get those all of those right that's why i made those centering jigs because now i just basically loosen up the frame on the sled put a bit in it put the router in it and i bring it forward i put that template in it and i lower it down until the bit just slides in the hole and then i tighten up the frame and that means that's it the router is perfectly centered in that three inch hole every time yeah because i used to i used a centering jig on my my rigid router and it the problem is the centering jig was too small for the entire diameter hole um so i basically just kind of carefully set it upside down and then use my caliper but i know i'm probably a little bit off and that's why when i when i you know shift the jig or the sled back and forth I can see the bit moving just ever so slightly. And I was just trying to trying to clean that up because I think that'll be a one big thing that, that cleans it up. Um, because even right now I'm less than I'm less than three millimeters. I'm at just over two. It's just getting that, getting it as best I can. Um, and I wasn't sure if you'd done any of the videos on it yet, because I hadn't seen it on your videos. I went back and watched a lot of them. Uh, just to, you know, if I ain't gotta, if I ain't gotta make the mistakes, why why do it, you know? Yeah, I'm, like I said, hopefully not this weekend. We're heading out on the RV, but I'll go ahead and put those on print. So when I come back on Monday or whatever, they should be printed and sit on the printer done. Awesome. Uh, I'll get um, things printed. And I'm also looking at, because I've got the older upgrade kit, because um, I noticed the big thing on the sled, and, and I didn't get to watch your whole video on the up, like your new, as you built their new, uh, their new Maslow. Because literally, I noticed the dust collection, the only thing that really changed is they added that top piece of Lexan glass. And I've already just cut a piece to go there. Um, has anybody else done that? I haven't put it on yet, but I cut a piece with just a small hole for the bit, literally just a half inch hole for the bit to go down in. And then it just, I'm going to glue it to the top of the board or the sled. Yeah. Um... So the, the one that I have here, so I have the old version and the new version, right? And the, the new version has that, it's almost an hourglass piece, whatever, that Lexan piece that just sits down on it. Um, 
you can glue it to the board. Just remember your board will wear out and you'll have to cut another Lexan piece. But um, Mike is on here. I, I want to say they, they Maker Made made the plans for those free for the sled and stuff. They were, they, I seen it by, God, who was it? Patrick was the one I think sent it out and said, hey, here's the design for the STL file or whatever. The yeah, SD it, for it the sled. The, it should be on the owner's group. He, I mean, he posted on the owner's group. Yeah, so anybody can make it. Okay, you have to go back and search it. Yeah. I don't know if it has the, the plexiglass component in there, but I mean, you know, it's it's up to you. It, yeah, I, I well, don't. I got know. tons of Lexan for building custom signs. Yeah, uh, it's just just taking a little piece of it and adding it to the. That's where I just looking at the boards and looking at some of the stuff I've seen on uh, you know online was. Uh, I thought it'd look really cool to build a, a full uh, Lexan board. Just some of the scrap I have It'd be a fun little build. I was gonna also ask you about your. Uh, I got really interested and been really busy last couple weeks. Haven't been able to jump on here. Your new gantry system. Uh, have you gotten to the test phase on that with the, the new bearings and the. No, I got everything. Gantry set up. I got everything printed. I got the boards, the frame built. I got the everything done. I got to go down and buy the pipe. I got to I'll buy the pipe and install it on my frame. I disassembled part of my frame so I can prep for it. So I changed my skirts on it, but. Yeah, as soon as I get, uh, I need four pieces of pipe at 10 feet long. And I'll see, uh, it's, it has to be ODM pipe because ODM pipe has a standard, um, it has decent deviation in the outside diameter where if you just buy black pipe from Lowe's or even conduit, it can have, you know, up to two millimeter deviation in the outside diameter. So you can't be using that stuff. It's gotta be ODM pipe. But uh, that's what I'm, I, there's a place right here in town that sells it in 10 foot sticks. So that's what I'm going to run down and grab some of that. But yeah, it's coming along. So you, got, you out of Ferguson's? Yes, actually it is Ferguson's. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to ask yeah. you if you had a Ferguson's. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. So they sell it there. But like I said, I got all the, I don't know if you guys can see this. Hold on. So there's two things like this, two frame boards that you see. I redesigned these, made them as lightweight as possible. The pipe goes in through these. And it, these, there'll be one on the bottom and then one on the top. And then you have this piece right here, which is the sled. This one right here is what will hold the ring and everything for the Maslow for the M2. So you'll basically, you'll, you'll toss the ring that you, the sled that you have, that'll all go away, but you'll still use the ring and the Z axis on this. So that'll all, that's what these mount holes here are for, are for the ring with a recessed in the back. So yeah, once that's all done on there, running the calculations the pipes don't take any weight because the chain takes the weight of the m2 so i'm not worried about pipe deflection yep. um yeah i once that's on uh, i'll give that a run and i think what i'll do is for the kit the type of the kit because people have to buy their own pipe i'll probably just make the uh the stl files for the frame pieces free so anybody you've already got a a Maslow, you can probably cut the top and bottom piece and the part for your M2 where it will bolt onto. And then I'll just have a kit upgrade, as, which will be the bearings, the blocks, and the pillow blocks. All that stuff is 3D printed. So I'll just have those, they'll be for sale in a kit. And then you'll just assemble it yourself. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in just for a second. The, um, so I don't have one of these yet. I'm just kind of toying around with the idea of of getting one <clears throat> but you made reference to uh videos that you've published i don't know if you have i don't know if you can provide like a link to where these are or or direct me to where these are i'm I, I, again i'm i'm in like sponge mode so i'm absorbing everything i can trying to be an informed consumer uh, but yeah i'm definitely interested in seeing what 
what you got going on and uh you know obviously getting getting higher precision out of the out of the cuts that i do i'm interested in that too so i don't know if you can like drop a link in the chat or or uh give me some give me some advice how to find your content i'm interested in in looking at that yeah they're all on youtube just look up, oh okay look up to the number two and then tankards creations two tankards creations okay casey will casey will put it right on the chat yeah okay thanks And then if you're on the Facebook, if you're on the Facebook uh, user group, just look up Casey and okay. you'll find all my posts in there. And I, every time I post a video, I put a link up there in there to my YouTube channel so that people could just easily click on that. And it'll it's 12 right o'clock. YouTube. So awesome. It was just awesome. an easy link. Yeah. yeah. And it'll just, yeah, okay. just like and subscribe. That way, whenever he posts no, on new videos, you can get you know, notifications. Yeah, for sure. All right, thanks. All right, well, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna dial up. Yeah, I really appreciate uh, you guys putting this on. I, uh, you know, not being a not being an owner, this definitely makes uh, again the interaction I see on this is all all good stuff. So it makes me a uh, makes me a pretty um, you know makes it makes it less of a less of a risk when you got such an active community. So anyway, thanks guys, I really appreciate it, and uh, maybe I'll see you next week. And Mike, I'll. Uh, I'll probably send you an email next week and see, I know you mentioned maybe some, uh, maybe some, uh, you know, a quote at a different price or whatever, but yeah, I'll reach out to you. You said Mike at makermade.com. Make right? Yeah. We're going to have a live demo. We're going to start doing live demos. And so, uh, and then I can give you all the information during the live demo. All right. That's cool. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate it. All right, Casey. Have a wonderful day. You too. All right, guys. It's 12 o'clock. Any other questions before we get off? No, I got to go get my RV ready. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dustin, got any questions, Dustin? Uh, can you guys hear me? Well, hey, Casey, if you ever, if you have any of y'all ever ever in Georgia, let me know. Yeah, we actually plan on going up there next year, Tennessee and Georgia area. We're going to do two, uh, two runs. We have one of those big class A, the buses, you know, but uh, yeah, we're going to hit that next year. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm down just outside Savannah, so if you're out this way, look me up. Yeah, definitely. Dustin, you had a question. You were. Uh, I didn't know if you guys could hear me. I was having some mic problems earlier. Um, I just bought my M2, and so I was just listening in to uh, see what uh, I need to make sure I'm doing correctly as I build my frame today. I'm going to get started on that today, um, but. It sounds like I got to make sure everything is as square as possible. Yeah, the, the important part, you know, assembling the frame with the two by fours and then putting your ply on there. Uh, I use MDF for my backer board. Uh, it's, you know, people call it the spoil board, the weight board, whatever. The, an MDF piece like that is actually an inch longer and an inch wider than a standard um, four by eight sheet of plywood. So I like to use that knowing that any plywood I buy afterward to put on there will fit. So I use a, it's the larger backer board, but use that. It's, they're always square. They're very, really rigid. And the other thing is, is with MDF, it's primarily paper and epoxy and with wood chip in it. So it doesn't expand and contract with the environment. That's something that a lot of people don't know. And that helps keep your frame square okay well uh i got lucky because i bought a three-quarter inch mdf board to do my my waste board with there so you go. there you go i didn't know all yeah. that but i got lucky <laughs> and then the next piece once you get your frame built the next peak piece is mounting your frame to and making sure your top beam is perfectly level square and centered with that frame that you just built and the height needs to be at least um, 18 inches from the top of your, your waste board to the middle of the sprockets on your, on your uh, top beam. Okay. Then that... in, those, in those videos, I don't know if you've seen any of my videos, but I go through very detailed step-by-step -step on how to measure and align all of that. Yeah. I watched a few of those before I got the, got the frame or uh, went ahead and bought the M2. Um, yep. the, the 18 inches is not, 
it doesn't have to be perfect 18 inches. It just has to be at least 18 inches. Is that right? At least okay. 18 inches. The, the triangulation calculation that is used below 18 inches, the numbers start getting fuzzy. Above 18 inches, I wouldn't go too high, but I mean, if you're in between 18 and 19, somewhere in there, you're good. Okay. You're, I think I'm at um, 18 and uh, 8 or 18, it's just slightly over 18 on mine. Okay. I, I figured if you went too high, you'd probably stop being able to get to the bottom of your sheet if you wanted to cut there. So that's right. That's okay. right. That's why I'm saying stay within an inch above 18. Because if you go any higher, then your 10 foot change won't reach the bottom of your of your corners. But you got to be aware too that even with your 10 foot change, you won't have very good accuracy on the bottom corners of your. Yep. Yep. I, I yeah. try to educate myself as much as possible about the realities of, of this tool. You know, it's not going to be perfect in those corners. Yeah. But I mean, if you're still in the middle Please. of your build process, order your 15 foot chains. Go ahead. On a <laughs> I, I don't have enough room to get a um, 12 foot um, top board quite okay. yet. I, I just have a little one car garage. So okay. <laughs> I, I have a circuit breaker that runs into the way of, of that right now. So, ah, uh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, the 10, the, yeah, the 10, 10 foot is just fine. You just, the way I set mine up is I put in a skirt at the bottom of that MDF board. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the bottom of the frame, actually, the MDF on it. But then I bolted, I screwed on another one by six board on that. So I had a lip. So I can sit a piece of plywood up there and lean it up against the board. But what that does is you can actually run a couple of screws in there, make a couple of cuts, then pull the screws out and slide the whole thing over. So you're always cutting roughly in the center of that, of your board. Okay. That's the, what I do. I just adjust my my cut piece as, as I go, and I it I like I said I stay within one millimeter of accurate. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think. I don't think I have anything else. <laughs> like I said, I've got the box. I've been waiting for the rain to stop, and today it finally stopped, so I can finally get out and try it. Um, I, I'm sure I'll have lots of questions after I get into it. Yeah. All right, folks, that's all I had. Anybody have anything else? Mike? No, we're good to go. Anything come from your guys' big meeting that you had up there you guys were putting on Facebook? <laughs> nothing yet. <laughs> oh, man, you just went up there and drank a lot of beer and did nothing, didn't you? Yep. I got to know, the, know everyone, and we had a good time. And we talked about a few things that were launching, so, but it's, uh, it's up in the air. So. Good. All right, folks. That's all I had. All right, guys. We'll see you all next week. Yeah. Thank you very much. See you later. Right, bye. Bye.